A lot going on on the West Coast over the weekend. Negotiators failing to reach a deal on Friday between the Hollywood Studios and the Screenwriters Union. But the summer box office continued to outperform. Barbie crossing the $1 billion mark in global receipts on Sunday. And this past weekend's new releases, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and uh, Meg 2 outperforming opening estimates as well, marking the first big films to open without promotion from striking actors. So uh, that's an interesting component to all of this. For more, I want to bring in Matt Bellany, founding partner at Puck News. It's great to see you, uh, Matt. Uh, read last night's newsletter or into this morning, of course. Uh, help us understand what happened on Friday and what comes next. Well, it was a setback. There was some optimism heading into this meeting because it was the first time that the Writers Guild and the studios have met since the writers went on strike in early May. And it did not go well. There was some name calling before the meeting. They did meet, but the outcome there was um, basically we're back to square one. The writers introduced a couple of new asks. They wanted the right to continue to strike with the Screen Actors Guild, which is also on strike, even if they make a deal. They wanted some additional um, health care asks. And they basically said, we are not going to budge on some of the core issues involving residuals, involving um, the writer's room. They want ads made to the writer's room. And the studio side was basically like, we're willing to give on a couple of things, but there are some non-starters for us. We're not going to do a success metric, which is like a transparency metric. They don't want to open up their books to the writers. And a couple of other things that they just said, we're not willing to go there. So they basically broke it off. And we'll see this week if they agreed to actually continue negotiating. And if not, we could be in for the long haul here. So wh where are the... the if you were to look at the fault lines, but look at the fault lines where there's an opportunity for compromise, and you've written about this, where do you see them? The compromise here, I mean, the money issues are somewhat doable. Money can solve everything, they say, but the money issues, I think, are doable here. It's these fundamental issues like transparency, where the writers want access to books. They want to see that their shows are making money and that are delivering viewers. And that's something where the streamer components, particularly Netflix, Amazon, Apple, they just don't do that. They don't want to set the precedent of allowing these guilds to see the inner metrics of their companies. And that's a real hard one to, to bridge. And I do think that these issues of the writer's room, where the writers want commitments to staff the writer's room with six, eight, ten writers. They don't want these situations where there's one writer doing an entire show. They want commitments that there will be writers hired for these shows. And the studios are like, we're not going to commit to hiring writers when we don't necessarily need them. So those are the more kind of fundamental issues where I think that they are going to have problems. The compromise is going to be on the money. Okay, so Matt, I'm looking at the calendar. We're on August 7th. I think there was a sense, at least among some in Hollywood, that maybe you could get a deal uh, by Labor Day. And then the question, of course, is, do you do that concurrently with the actors? Does the actors come after that? Does this then push into the end of September, into October? Where, where do you see this really going in terms of looking now at a calendar and a true timeline? Because it will have a massive knock-on effect as you get out into not just, you know, what we see on the air this fall, but more importantly, what you see next spring and summer. Absolutely. And that's the real fear. The studios are losing out on these summer movies, potentially, if this strike continues to go. Um, you know, Warner Brothers Discovery CEO David Zaslav uh, said last week they were anticipating Labor Day, that this would be resolved. I've been sort of similar, where I think that early to mid-September, they will get a deal with first the writers and then the actors, or potentially vice versa, if this does not work out. I think this week is key. If they do not continue to negotiate on the writer's side this week, then this they're not going to, they're going to break. They're not going to negotiate for weeks. And that's going to set everything back. The guilds are, have been going one by one. The studios have been negotiating it one at a time. So I think if they don't get a deal with the writers here, they'll probably end up going back to the actors. But the actors have been equally, if not more forceful in their demands. And the rhetoric coming out of Fran Drescher and the actors has been pretty incendiary. So I don't know that if the studios expect to go in there and get concessions from these guilds, I don't know that they're going to get them anytime soon. Right. 
Do you, uh, do you see any break happening either among the writers themselves who may be, you know, there's a lot of folks obviously are going to start to struggle to, to, to pay their rent. I know that's probably uh, strategically something some of the studios uh, had been had been banking on in terms of breaking them for a compromise. Similarly, on the actor side or flip it around. Is there any break even between some of the studios? Well, the interesting question there on this on the Guild side, there has been remarkable solidarity on the Guild side. This is the first strike of the social media era. And the writers and actors have used social media to galvanize their membership. And there's been this cheerleading effect where they're all in it together. Now, keep in mind that these are very unique unions and that the majority of the memberships don't actually work at a given time. This is not like you know auto workers or restaurant workers where everyone is on the same level and they're all fighting for, for better conditions on the job. You know, the, the Screen Actors Guild in particular, very small number of these members actually work. So the people that voted for this strike aren't actually the ones that are, not, are, are working at a given time. So that creates a very interesting dynamic, as well as the income disparity within the guild. You're in a, this, these Actors Guild, right. you know, Tom Cruise is a member, and your average member is barely making enough money to get insurance. You know, most of the members uh, in the teens don't even make enough money in a year to get insurance coverage. So I think that there is potential there for differences in opinion there. On the studio side, obviously, Disney has very different concerns than Comcast or Netflix or Amazon or Apple. These are very different businesses with different agendas that only come together in the AMPTP, this coalition, in order to negotiate labor deals. So they have their own issues on their side of getting on the same page if they're ever going to make a deal here.